what are the symptoms of internal heat and can you treat this condition by popular demand in this video we're going to look at the subject of internal heat and see if we can learn some of its causes and possible treatments stay tuned hi everybody welcome back to the channel i'm dr sylvia a general practitioner and health educator this is ask away health where we provide you with direction and clarity about everything medical please subscribe to the channel and when you do don't forget to click the notification bell so that when we publish a new video once a week on saturdays you'll be the first to know about it so let's begin you've probably heard of internal heat or experienced it yourself but i think it's important to say that internal heat is not a medical term that's associated with or that is linked to a specific medical condition. It's a non-medical term that's used to describe a sensation of excess amounts of heat or abnormal heat in the body. It could be one part of the body or it could be all over the body. Now, because it is a non-specific term, when one person says they have internal heat, might be different from what the next person says to mean internal heat and some people may experience internal heat alone and others may experience internal heat as well as other symptoms like sweating excessive sweating for example now I thought before we look at the causes of abnormal or internal heat it's important to look at how our bodies generate or develop heat in the first instance now our bodies get heat by breaking down the food that we eat. So our body makes chemical energy from the food that we eat that's converted to heat and stored in our bodies for future use. In addition, our body keeps a normal level of temperature, what's called baseline. Because all along, whether you're sleeping or you're running or you're just sitting, your body, your body cells are involved in one activity or the other generating heat. Your body also has different mechanisms or systems by which it controls your temperature depending on the environment in which you are. For instance, if your body realizes that you need to get warmer, for example, you walk into a cold room, what happens is that your blood vessels, they constrict or they narrow, conserving your heat energy, and then your muscles begin to contract and you shiver, which is supposed to generate more heat to make you warmer. On the other hand, if your body decides that actually you're overheated and you need to cool down, so if you find yourself on a beach with um, a jacket on, long skirt or um, a fur clothing or you know inappropriate uh, clothing and you're overheated, then your body makes your blood vessels widen they open up and that brings heat um, um, towards your skin in your skin there are sweat glands and when those sweat glands are activated they release sweat and when the sweat is released from your body it evaporates and that makes your skin cool down so the body has different things that it does in response to your environment your normal body temperature is set or controlled by a tiny little organ in your brain which is called the hypothalamus. And it is this organ that's actually responsible for these um, scenarios I just discussed, you know, determining what to do when the body is too hot or too cold. In human, in human beings, the normal body is set at around 37 degrees Celsius or about 98.6 um, Fahrenheit, with a variation of plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees that's normal in most people. So here's another heat fact. Did you know that during the course of a day, your own body temperature can change by 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 degrees, and this is perfectly normal? So this means that your body temperature is warmest during the early evening, so around 6 p.m., um, and it's coolest during the very early morning, around 4 a.m. There are other normal events that are linked to a higher body temperature. For example, the process of ovulation in a woman when the ovary releases an egg. Now in that process, the body temperature is slightly increased for a few hours every month. Pregnancy is another natural condition when the body heat goes up because of all the extra 
activity that the body cells are undergoing or undertaking to maintain the pregnancy. Okay, so that's some background about how your body maintains its body heat. Now let's talk about abnormal heat and in this case there are two main dimensions I'd like us to consider. The first dimension is fever which is also known as pyrexia. In a fever, the hypothalamus which controls body temperature like I explained earlier, the setting at which it maintains the body temperature goes up. But what causes this to happen? We believe that certain chemicals cause, called pyrogens can cause the hypothalamus setting to rise from the normal 37 degrees, that is 98.6, to 40 or 41 degrees, that's 104 to 105.8 Fahrenheit. And we know of several things that produce pyrogens. These are infections with germs like bacteria or viruses. So you could include breathing infections or urine infections, problems like malaria, HIV or tuberculosis, Certain injuries can cause the body temperature to go up because they lead to the production of these pyrogens. Cancer as well, blood cancers like leukemia or lymphoma, as well as cancer of organs like the pancreas, kidney, brain or bone can also um, be linked to producing these chemicals, pyrogens, which then um, affect the hypothalamus setting and then change the temperature. And we think that it is intentional, the body intentionally resets this hypothalamus setting in order to help it to fight the infection or whatever the condition is by raising the body temperature. So when it's measured, you see, you definitely see an increase in the thermometer. Now closely related to this is something called hyperpyrexia. You know we said fever is pyrexia. So this is a level of fever that's actually above 41 degrees or 105.8 Fahrenheit. Now the second dimension that we want to talk about for internal describing internal heat or abnormal heat in the body is known as hyperthermia. And the difference between hyperthermia and fever is that in hyperthermia, the hypothalamus setting is not changed. It remains the same, but the body temperature goes up. And the problem, the reason this happens is because all the body's mechanisms for heating, or for controlling heating and cooling of the body as, as um, depending on its environment or what it's exposed to, fail to work. And so if these me mechanisms become overrun by one condition or the other, the body is unable to get rid of excess heat. So let's look at some of the situations that are linked or that happen in hyperthermia. Some of these you're familiar with and it makes sense, you'd expect that the body will be warmer as a result. One of them is exercise. Of course, you know that your body warms up during exercise, but people who exercise, those who go jogging or running, are at more risk of developing hyperthermia, which is where there's an abnormal accumulation of excessive heat. In instances where they've gone to exercise after taking certain types of medicines that could affect the body's ability to regulate the temperature. These may be drugs that they take routinely, anticholinergic medication for example, or, or going exercising after having alcohol. Outside of exercise, there are also some drugs that could interfere with the body's mechanism for controlling its temperature. And examples are recreational drugs like cocaine or heroin. Another common cause of hyperthermia that you might be familiar with is from exposure to excessively warm or hot environments. Now this might be common for people who are on vacation or holiday in very warm climates that they're not particularly used to or in a very warm enclosed room or spending just too much time in the sun. Okay, so let's look at some other less obvious um, causes that are linked to abnormal or internal heat. They could be increasing age, so as people grow older, it could be associated with certain medical treatments. It can also be associated with consuming spicy foods and conditions like menopause and overactive thyroid, anxiety, acid reflux, heart disease and brain disease are also conditions where one can experience internal heat or abnormal body heat. So you can see that there are several reasons why a person might complain of internal heat. 
and when they say they're experiencing internal heat you need to consider are they experiencing a fever or are they experiencing um, hypothermia to one degree or another and so if you think that you are experiencing internal heat it's important to speak to your doctor because there are different causes and we need to work out which cause is responsible for your own symptoms and so how best to address them but here are a few tips for how you can manage a feeling of internal heat that is uncomfortable tip number one wear clothing that helps your skin breathe fabrics like cotton or when exercising or performing any sports breathable sportswear tip number two where possible sleep in a well ventilated cool room tip number three if you know that you are at risk of internal heat or you experience internal heat avoid foods that are cooked with spices um, hot chili pepper onions or garlic are some that have been known to be linked with um, a, um, in feelings of or sensations of internal heat and number four have a look at the medicines that you take or that you're prescribed this is because a lot of the medicines that we use commonly can affect the way the sweat glands operate or other mechanisms that the body uses to control um, our heat up our temperatures and this can lead to hypothermia of course if a person has a high body temperature from an infection so there is a fever this can be treated with medicines like paracetamol or ibuprofen but check with your doctor pharmacist or nurse that it is safe for you to take any medication first so hopefully this video has provided some clarity about the causes of internal heat and of course the treatment it is dependent on the specific cause so if you think you suffer from internal heat and problem speak to your doctor it's important to find out why so that the right treatment can be started thank you for watching please don't forget to like the video if you found it useful and if this is your first time um, watching one of our videos thank you please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell and if you found this topic of interest then you might also want to check out my video on what to know when you're given any pres prescribed medicine and I'm going to put a link to that video in the description below. Okay guys, stay well and see you again soon.